It's a great day in Daytona Beach, Florida. So good to have you with us. It's going to be a great night as well. Camping World Truck Series opening up their season later on on FS1 tomorrow. All about the Xfinity cars that have their first practice of 2022 right now. And if this year picks up where last year left off, we are in for a real treat. Because that guy, Daniel Hemrick, driving for Joe Gibbs Racing, had never won overtime finish in the championship race. And he makes this move to win by that much. He's a winner. He's a champion. But he's changed teams as he sticks the landing for 2022. What's he thinking about the year ahead? Let's go to the garage. He's with Regan Smith. Well, Adam, as you mentioned, it's been a season of off changes in the Xfinity Series. Daniel, the last time we saw you, it was all smiles and backflips. You got that first career win and the championship that came with it. But over the off season, you come to a new team, College Racing, new crew chief, Alex Yance. What's it been like? Yeah, it's uh, it's been interesting, to say the least. It's been a busy off season. Obviously, obviously ended last year on a really the highest note you can end on, right here in the NASCAR Xfinity Series season, which I am thankful to be a part of again. Um, but really pumped to know that even with what we did last year moving over here to college racing to have ag1 jump on board this thing and know that the little bit they've tapped into over here at college racing they know all of us collectively know that we have yet to see what the full potential is here so that's uh as a race car driver that's all you can ask for make sure me humble to be back here um just love driving race cars look forward to another year of it adam from one championship winning team to another team that's capable of winning championships Pretty good move for Daniel Hummer. I'm not betting against him, I'll tell you that much. And, you know, some would call what happened to him early in his career a, a losing streak. A absolutely not. Hey, everybody, with Michael Walter, I'm Adam Alexander. I say that because you went 0 for what? Uh, it was more than that. Yeah. It was, it was 462. So I told <laughs> Daniel yesterday, I said, you, you didn't even tap into what a losing streak is all about. But, wow, how about how he put an end to that streak? That pass, that move at Phoenix to win that race and win the championship, that's what the NASCAR Xfinity Series is all about. These guys are hungry. They want to prove that they belong here. And maybe one day they belong in the Cup Series. This is a great series, and this is a great time of year you get asked this question you win a championship why would you change teams tyler reddick won a championship 2018 changed teams and he won, won again, again one season later cars on track when we roll on from the world center of racing it's practice for the nascar xfinity series Well, I've told my first lie of 2022. I promised prior to the break when we come back, cars will be on track. They're not as of now. Look at this Fox weather, 82 degrees. And, I mean, we're, we're just expecting a perfect weekend. Michael, the place is sold out. Not just the grandstand for the Daytona 500, all the infield parking, the campgrounds. I mean, it is going to be an awesome weekend, and you can watch all the activity if you can't be here with us on FS1, Fox, and the Fox Sports app. It's the best weekend of the year for me, Adam. And just to feel the energy, the intensity uh, in the garage area, what these drivers are looking forward to. I mean, there's 47 Xfinity cars here that are going to try to make this race. and and. Who's going to be the story of 2022? I have to argue that Ty Gibbs might have been the story last year with what he accomplished, and uh, he, he didn't even get to practice any, Adam, and he still was able to put those. I saw him yesterday. I said, you think he'll be any better this year now that you're getting to practice? And uh, he laughed and said, I probably will be. I'd take your Ty Gibbs story, and, and I won't one-up you, but I would say right there with him, this guy, Josh Berry, who was incredible last year, another part-timer that's full-time this season. And, and that's what I love, Adam. You can just go down the list and story after story that makes it so entertaining. And, and now we're at Daytona, right? We're going to figure out uh, who's going to get the biggest trophy of the year, the best trophy of the year. And um, that's what makes it so fun down here. So we've seen three of the four junior motorsports cars on track. The one missing, the guy that won here two years ago, Noah Gregson. You are in the traffic lane, Tom Ford. Just let me know if there's any quality in this line. I might wait, let them go. You know, see if there's any other quality guys that want to draft. Maybe ask up there. Uh, just trying to figure out where he wants to be. And a lot of times it's fun to be with your teammates, especially when you have quality teammates like Noah has. And you can see there's three of them lined up. Noah's going to maybe try to join that group. I would. Noah Gregson racing Sunday in the Daytona 500. He's going to run about half the cup races this year. He's just making steady, steady progression every year. It gets better and better. And there you can see he's leaving pit road. Probably going to try to get in this little 
threesome. He's got a new crew chief this year. Luke Lambert has come on board. I mentioned earlier the success of Tyler Reddick. His crew chief when he won the title at Junior Motorsports. Dave Ellens has moved on and opened the door for Luke. who has got a lot of experience at the cup level to come back to the Xfinity Series and work with driver nine. You can see that just off turn two. Three car draft is the fastest three cars in Daytona so far. Mayor leading the, the way. And a lot of times the third car in line will be the fastest because he's able to lay back a little bit and then pull up on his teammates. Noah's off four now. Those guys are just entering, just exiting four. So won't be long till their four car draft. What you're doing now, Adam, is just filling your car out. You know, you, you want to see what the air does to it. And what I would do in a situation like this, and I think that's what you see there with uh, Justin Allgaier, you want to fall back a little bit off the guy in front of you and then feel what kind of run you can get up there. You don't want to just be flat out, wide open, hanging right onto his bumper. You want to see how big of a move you can make. And if you do get a little low on him, are you able to pull up? And how does the air affect your car? It's like a total onboard computer in someone's brain right now, taking in all the information, feeling the engine, feeling how it's handling, and understanding how the air helps you gain on other cars. For some, this is a true opportunity to go out and learn in the draft. For others, this practice session almost almost like a, a glorified warm-up. You know, they, they just go out there and make sure everything is where it needs to be. You don't want to tear up anything and set yourself for qualifying tomorrow. There's the 48. Jade Buford came on board last year, second year for this organization. Big machine racing, but new to them is their alliance with RCR, Richard Childress Racing. In fact, they're operating up there in Welcome, North Carolina on the RCR campus. And I know expecting a huge growth spurt in their second year together. You can see everybody liked to look to that three-car draft of the Junior Motorsports cars and wants to be a part of that. And we're just going to see speeds continue to escalate as the pack gets bigger. And if I'm Josh Berry, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to just be out front the whole time. I want to be in other positions, following guys and seeing what my car does. That, this opportunity will present itself shortly. Second car in there in line behind Justin Allgaier, Sam Mayer who ran 18 races a year ago. Very talented young driver that will run for the championship. And I know you like him, Michael, because at age 17, he won in the truck series at Bristol. That's amazing. I mean, you win at Bristol when you're 37, it's a big deal, especially 17. Practice underway at Daytona. Back at the World Center of Racing, let's play a little Daytona trivia. What Ooh. happened like 20 years ago to the day, Michael? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Ward uh, Burton won the Daytona 500, and now his son Jeff oh. behind the wheel of the 27 for our motorsports. Yeah. I, I thought the picture would give it away. I'm sorry to hang you out. No, I, I, I'm, I was just rem reminiscing that I finished fifth, but I didn't know what that had to do with me. You know, so, a lot of times as a race car driver, you think it's all about you. I understand. And you remember Sterling got out on the back straightaway to fix his car. Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> so you went first, fifth, first. That's three pretty good years in a row in that race. Yeah, and I think we got a first and a second here in July during that, that run. So we, we had it going on there for a while. And speaking of having it going on, this young man has been so much fun to watch. He's the fastest in this session, and his numbers are impressive to say the least, huh, Adam? I mean, four wins and 18 starts. He was the rookie of the year, despite the fact he didn't run the full season. Was the ARCA champion last year. And, you know, I mentioned what happened 20 years ago to the day, almost one year ago to the day. He gets in that race car, making his Xfinity debut, had never done a live pit stop, and you're like, expectations are low because he's only 18. Comes out and wins the race. I guarantee no one saw that coming. You know, if he had finished in the top five, we would have. That would have been a big deal. But he went out and won the race, and that's just an incredible story. In 2021, we'll see where it goes this year. He's got a lot of ability. Now he's got some experience. Does he dominate the Xfinity Series this year? It's certainly a possibility. Dale Earnhardt, Terry Labonte, Joe Rutman, Ricky Rudd, and Kurt Busch, the other drivers that won in their first ever start in the Xfinity Series. That's some pretty elite company right there. 
I like what I'm seeing with the way these cars are handling. They're able to run all over, up high, down low, a lot of moving around. I think this is a, I think the rules and the way NASCAR has the cars set up is, is really working well. Looking forward to this race. Ryan Truex, younger brother of. I know this trivia question. You, okay, go ahead. Give it to us. Martin Truex Jr. But he's not Ryan Truex Jr. He's just Ryan he's, Truex. Yeah, you got to drop yeah. the junior when you talk about him. <laughs> yeah, he's driving for Sam Hunt. In fact, he's got a teammate this weekend. Jeffrey Earnhardt entered in the 24. They'll run that second car at Sam Hunt Racing some throughout the season. Primarily, though, a one-car operation. It will be the 26. They had a great debut campaign a season ago and all those Toyotas out there mixing it up together now Brandon Jones and that bright neon number 19 and Drew Dollar driving the 18 this weekend he's making his first ever start in the Xfinity series and those junior motorsports cars have been out there for 11 laps now so they've committed to run a long way here on the on the start of this session but Junior Motorsports has been great at Daytona. They've won five of the last eight in February. And, and it seems like when they're not winning, this group is. Colleague Racing, you mentioned Daniel Hemrick going over there, the reigning champion to drive the 11 car. A.J. Allmendinger, championship four a season ago after winning five times. And another new teammate, Landon Castle, will drive the 10 this season. Here's what they've done lately at Daytona and Talladega. That's impressive. And they've uh, they've become a team that is at the top of your list of championship contenders guys that you know are going to be right there at come the end of the season win on any type of racetrack road course super speedway it doesn't matter and they're formed up there with the, a three-car draft talk to those guys in the garage this morning they said our primary goal go out make a handful of laps in the draft with our three cars we don't want any of the alliance guys out there we just want our three go out lay down some laps pull up in the garage and make sure we're good and when you've got three veterans like they have, you can feel really comfortable doing that. You're exactly right, Adam. And they, they are going to be able to, I'm telling you, in about two or three laps, you, you've learned, if you're a veteran, pretty much everything you've got. Now, what would be interesting, and when you run laps like JRM is doing right now, out to 11, 12 laps, you're understanding then what your car does when your tires heat up and how the cars handle with the, the little bit of tire wear. So there's two philosophies, but as a veteran, you're going to figure out real quickly whether you got something you like or not. You know, Ross Chastain has, has been good for them in this configuration. Uh, but, but also Justin Haley, who's now moved on to the Cup Series. He won the last time we were here for Team Colleague. It happened last August. Ty Gibbs, top of the leaderboard. Practice is rolling at Daytona. Track is still good. Water. We're pushing water. I'm coasting. I'm coasting. We got water coming through the, through the windshield. I'm coasting. I killed it. Okay, a whole lot going on here. Yeah, I think he's got other issues as I, well. I, I didn't notice the water, actually. <laughs> his, his sunroof flew open. Wait, we used to run convertibles on the beach, you know? <laughs> it's a beautiful day. Now, I, I, I know we don't have the video, so I hate to bring it up, but, but there was a time when you liked to climb out of the roof hatch after yeah, a big win. We won Talladega, and I was able to pop right out of there. That was one of my favorite moments winning at Talladega and getting to celebrate like that. Now everybody's running it now, but th there was a, a time when this was not a mandatory piece of the car, and you were one of the first ever to go with the roof hatch. Yeah, just uh, I, I was a lot to fit in one of these cars, especially during the early O's. The cars really shrunk, and it wasn't until the new car came along there, there's more room in those cars, and these cars now uh, certainly are roomier, but it's nice to have a alternate exit path <laughs> you know you know that Regan Smith he's a front runner he starts the show and he talks to the defending champ we're going back to Regan now and who's he going to talk about the the guy that's fastest in practice what's up with Ty Gibbs Regan Adam there's nothing like low-hanging fruit and that's where <laughs> I like to live my life at hey Ty Gibbs we talk about how we didn't have a lot of practice last season we finally get practice this year actually a good opportunity for them they he's come on the radio already told them he's got a vibration in that race car and he's got a little bit of an engine miss we see him out there leading that pack right now but good opportunity to work through some of that stuff and for this team to basically find things that maybe you wouldn't have found till the race uh, with what we were doing last year so he's got an engine miss and a vibration regan and he's the fastest car here so i i feel sorry for the competition if they sort all that out now you know what this reminds me of kyle bush over the years has driven that 54 car a lot it must be something about sitting in that seat because he he always had a problem and he was always fastest regan 
I, just to rebuttal that, Michael, I, I can't tell you anything other than what he's saying on the radio. I see the board. I see he's the fastest <laughs> car out there and, uh, you know, still looking for more. Every time you're out there, you want more. Regan, you got it all here in 2014. We talked about the success for Junior Motorsports, that run of five of the last eight in February. The first went to Regan Smith driving that seven car for Dale Jr. Fun afternoon for him. Those guys were committed to run some laps when it started this practice session, weren't they? That's uh, lap number 14 completed by the junior, excuse me, the Gibbs cars. I'm excited about this guy, Sheldon Creed, driving full-time for RCR and uh, someone that will go for Rookie of the Year and, and has a chance to do much more than just win Rookie of the Year. He's, he's been so much fun to watch. He, he just was exciting in the trucks. You can count on him scrubbing the wall and, and three wide, making all kinds of moves on the racetrack. Very exciting young racer to watch. Let's learn a little more about the guy driving the two car in 2022. <laughs> Boy, it pains me to see someone born in 1997. <laughs> he used to get a lot more air than he does now when he would race. And you talk about his success in the Camping World Truck Series on such a great ride a couple of years ago, really the last two years. Fun on and off the track, Michael. That's exactly what he is, and I really enjoy getting to know him and watch him uh, hone his craft. This car's got issues. That's Joe Graff Jr. Driving for Bobby Dodder, SS Greenlight Racing, and so much excitement and enthusiasm in that camp this year because they've developed an alliance with Stuart Haas Racing going from Chevy to Ford, but that doesn't look good, Michael. Yeah, maybe it was a qualifying run that hmm. didn't go well. I don't know how much tape they We're have. We're pushing water here. I, just, I cut it off the back switch. But uh, top 10 finish at Talladega, so he knows how to get it done on the big tracks. And you, you, you said it. Adam, this team's really looking forward to this season. They feel like they've gotten to a good spot to go contend for some top five finishes. 31 minutes to go in practice. What do you want to bet he's done? Justin Allgaier, huh? I wouldn't be surprised uh, if, if he is done. Maybe go make a Q run just for the heck of it. But uh, he looks pretty happy. There's a lot of smiles down there. He's never won at Daytona or Talladega, which is just unbelievable to me. Maybe tomorrow is his day. Sunday, it's the most iconic day in all the motorsports. The Daytona 500, the Great American Race, kicks off the 2022 NASCAR season. 2.30 Eastern Time, 11.30 Pacific, only on Fox in the Fox Sports app. Our coverage begins at 11 in the morning on FS1 with race day, and we'll take you through the checkered flag on Fox. We can't wait. What about this young guy, Drew Dollar? I think he's got a lot of talent. Watch him. Uh, get familiar with the NASCAR world on the truck and the truck series and now he's got this opportunity and and you know what I love about watching this Adam is just what all he's taking in everything that he's learning in this quality race car has his teammates around him what all he's able to decipher from how the car's handling how the air moves him around this is this is as intense as it gets for a young kid to come to Daytona especially when you talk about the car that he's in that 18 car is going to be the all-star car for Joe Gibbs Racing this year. Drew's going to be driving it at Daytona and Talladega. And our good friend and colleague, Trevor Bain, who won the Daytona 500 in 2011, going to drive the 18 for seven races this year, including next Saturday afternoon at Auto Club Speedway. So we look forward to seeing Trevor back behind the wheel. Yeah, that's cool. Trevor's going to get to run. Oh, Todd Bodine's going to go truck racing. Fox guys on the road. Back into that draft right there, the 31 of Myatt Snyder changed teams, went from RCR to drive for Jordan Anderson. You know, that was a, a startup last year. Didn't get off to a good debut because qualifying was rained out here. They didn't have any points. And because we weren't qualifying last year, it became a big problem for them. Eventually, they found their spot in line and really did a nice job. Yeah, and, and you got to appreciate everything that Jordan does. He, he just puts it all out there. I remember when we would go to... Uh, to Canada a couple of times. He didn't quite get there in time because he had hauler problems, just making his way north of the board. He would drive the truck, tow the truck, and then race the truck. And now he's put together this program with Myatt, and he just keeps getting better and better with his organization. Jordan finished second in the Truck Series last two years. Yeah. Un unfortunately, 
qualifying earlier today. You watched it on FS1. He missed the show, so not going to race tonight, but will be on the pit box tomorrow as an owner. There's Brandon Brown in the 68 as we send it back to the garage. Well, Adam, one of my favorite things when I came to Daytona was to be the first driver done practicing because that usually means you're pretty happy. Ryan Truex already in the garage, fourth on the board right now. Uh, how is that race car? It drives good. Uh, drives good. Um, that's pretty much all you can ask for. Um, it's Daytona, so, you know, the biggest thing is going to be keeping this uh, beautiful GR Super in one piece. Um, I'm so happy to be here, be back in the Xfinity Series. I wanted to say this for a long time. This car is as fast as Xfinity Internet. I'm so happy to say that again. Um, I'm just happy to be here. One of my best friends, Sam, Circle B, die cast on the car, uh, just having fun. We're happy to have you back. Yeah, he's a great personality, and I hope he can put a, a plan together to be here on a more regular basis. Here's a guy running full-time for Rookie of the Year, Jesse Awuji. And I challenge you to find a better story in the garage. And he's partnered up this year to run full-time. And the guy he's partnered with, Emmett Smith, a pro football Hall of Famer. Let's hear from the guy that used to tote the football for the Dallas Cowboys. We're at the beginning of something very exciting. And when we reached, when Jesse and I and our team reached out to the community, showed them something that they have not seen before, something that they didn't think was possible. Now they know that the doors are open and they're able to get and see this car. Uh, Jesse just, served our country in the U.S. Navy, and, and it's great to have him here in the Xfinity Series. It, it is incredible, and it's incredible to have Emmett as well as a as a kid growing up, he was my favorite football player. I got the pleasure of, of meeting Emmett. And that you could see the intensity, the energy, and that just fires you up. If you're a team member, you're like, we're gonna we're gonna have the same attitude that Emmett has. And it sure is fun to walk down in the garage area and see how happy Jesse is to be a part of this great sport. I'm looking forward to big things from this team. He wasn't just in the Navy, he attended the Naval Academy where he played football. And he did an interview this week with Bob Pockris, and Bob posted it on Twitter. You can go there and, and listen to the soundbite. But basically, Jesse said, when Emmett was in his prime, I was playing defensive back when I played football. I could have taken him down, no problem. So a little bit of inner house trash talk there between the, the two guys, and, and really it will be to fun to, to see him this weekend. Emmett might have said, you didn't really think that, did you? Yeah, right. <laughs> Emmett, the all-time leading rusher in the National Football League. If you put all those yards on the board, it's like 10 and a half miles. That's impressive. They call them photo finishes because you need to see them to believe them. By a matter of inches. And the Daytona 500 has had quite a few. That was crazy. But it's also had photo starts and photo drama. And definitely some photo-worthy cars. Lights, camera, start your engines. It's the biggest race of the year. The Daytona 500. I am the Daytona 500. I am NASCAR. When you look at the entry list in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, you will see a tremendous amount of flavor from years gone by in the Camping World Truck Series. Sheldon Creed has graduated, is moving on. His new teammate, Austin Hill, who also has picked up his diploma from the truck series. And we mentioned Sam Mayer, who won a couple of years ago at Bristol. He, too, running full time in the Xfinity Series, driving the one car for Junior Motorsports. That's what it's all about. And those are the fresh faces that have done it. There are many more that race here on Saturday afternoon. There's so many stories in the garage area and so much change. And everybody's talking about the, the competition. How many teams are down there that bring, you know, Adam as a racer, they unload a race car and you look at it and you say, wow, that's a nice car. That's from one end of the garage to the other with the Xfinity Series, such, such great competition we're going to see this year. Regan? Well, Adam, such great competition, as you mentioned, Michael. One of those teams that always brings awesome race cars, Joe Gibbs Racing, Coach Gibbs over here. Actually, watch him practice today. Your grandson, top of the board. How much does this series mean to you, and how much does it mean to have your grandson as the fastest car out there right now? Well, I think, you know, the Xfinity Series for us is a huge deal. We've got young drivers. We've got people moving from Xfinity to Cup for us, all of our crew chiefs. You know, and so it's a big deal for us. We got, we love this series. It's great to be in Daytona. It's great to be down here with a sellout. I think we got great weather. 
So I, I just think it's an exciting time for everybody. You got new cars and cup, and they're going to be practicing a little bit later. So it's a big deal for everybody. Thrilled to be here. Everybody's not here. Get down here. <laughs> Always good to see you, Coach Gibbs. Thank you. Or, or watch on FS1 and Fox this weekend. The coach looks great. He doesn't does, he? and it's fun to see him with that uh, with that big smile on his face down in the garage area. But I, can you imagine your grandson being the fastest in practice at Daytona? That's the that's got to feel great. And you can tell by the big smile. This guy's got a lot of talent and a lot of energy and excitement. He's fun to watch, I'll tell you that. It doesn't matter whether he's scraping the outside wall or diving three wide through the middle, he, he will get it done. Two rookies at RCR, Sheldon Creed and Austin Hill, but you know the expectations are as high as they've ever been. And you think about the storied program with the Xfinity Series and what Richard Childress Racing has been able to do. The accomplishments are endless, not just the two car, but that 21 both have delivered over the years. Yeah, and you know, I, I think it's really interesting, those two teammates, because if you talk about methodical and calculating and, and studious, I think of Austin Hill. On a mile and a half, there's no one better, and, and, and he's, he's raced for championships over there. And then the opposite is almost Sheldon Creed. While he does study and work hard at notes and, and does everything it takes to be a champion, he just has a flair to him that I love. And this is a big deal, too, Adam. These guys are, you see how, hus how he's hustling at to pit road, trying to figure out how far they can come off turn four wide open and get down to pit road speed. These athletes that jump over the wall and change the tires uh, on a pit stop, they work so hard, and the driver wants to reward them with the fastest car into the pit and then fastest leaving the pit once uh, they get past the timing line. But the timing lines are something that are very important. Kyle Weatherman, 92, driving for Mario Goslin, scheduled to run at least the first five races, 2022. What about that eighth place finish, Kentucky? That's mm -hmm. a good run in 2020. We'll Impressive. see what comes. And this is another kid I'm really looking for. He's got cup experience. He understands these racetracks. How will Anthony Alfredo perform in 2022? I wouldn't be surprised to see this young man go to victory lane. He's got talent to do just that. And uh, having the experience of racing the guys, whoa. That kind of scared me a little bit. Got my attention. <laughs> Having the experience of racing the guys on Sunday and then stepping back a step uh, and bringing that information with you, I think is going to be valuable for him. Well, you know, he ran a part-time schedule for RCR a couple of years ago here in the Xfinity Series and, and held his own. I'm excited, though, not just about Anthony, but we showed Jeb Burton earlier. We know about Brett Moffitt. As a group, our motorsports. They've gone from a two-car operation to a three-car operation. Moffitt about won this race last year. We know that Jeb was able to win at Talladega, driving for Colleg Racing. Across the board, they're building something nice over there. Isn't it fun to see what Colleg has built here and now you Dale Jr. with his team and, and all these teams coming up to the Xfinity Series and expanding and getting better and better. Natalie Decker driving the 33. Great here a couple of years ago in the Camping World Truck Series, Michael. Yeah, our spotter is Keith McGee, who runs some truck races as well. So he has some knowledge and information as a driver that she he can share, share with Natalie. That'll be helpful, but you're right. She's fast on the big tracks and fun to watch. 16 minutes to go. It's the one and only practice of the weekend for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Coming your way, bottom of the hour. Cup cars are on track. And it's all a setup for the season opener for the Camping World Truck Series tonight. And it's all right here on FS1. New team, you got to work out all the bugs, open up those communication lines, and sometimes you just talk with your hands as a driver. <laughs> A lot of times you do. <laughs> you, you want to tell the crew what you're feeling, and your hands are the best way to do just that. There's Brett Moffitt pulling back toward the garage area. You mentioned it, Adam. Nearly won this race a year ago, and I just love this young man. So determined, overcame broken, breaking both legs a couple of years ago and still raced for a truck championship. Regan? Well, and we talk about all the changes in the Xfinity Series this year. Let's just go ahead and start at the front of the grid. We have the 54 car of Ty Dillon getting ready to pull on the racetrack. He's going to be full-time this year. Next to him in the garage, or Ty, excuse me, will be full-time in the Xfinity Series this year. Right next to him in the garage, Noah Gregson, brand-new crew chief for this team. Next to Noah Gregson, we've got Landon Castle. This race team here, completely different driver, crew chief change. 
get to Brandon Jones, the 19 car. Brandon Jones, this is one of the few teams I have found that has very few changes. Same driver, same crew chief, same engineer. Justin Allgaier, brand new engineer for this team, so some stuff for them to get used to and get normal with. Then we get to A.J. Allmendinger. A.J. Allmendinger, one of our championship favorites last year. You've got a new crew chief, too. We're just talking about the garage. I don't know who's where or what's where anymore. Do you at least know which car you're supposed to get in? I do. It, it's this beautiful Nutrient X Solution <laughs> Chevy Camaro. It's uh, it's awesome to have them back as a partner. Uh, you know, they got hashtag leading the field, so that's perfect here for Daytona, right? That's what we want to do at Call Racing is lead the field uh, all day tomorrow. But, yeah, I mean, it's uh, that's what makes the Xfinity Series so fun. Like, you get a bunch of uh, young, new drivers. Uh, you got... I don't know, grizzled old veterans like me and Justin Allgaier, we'll call it that. But it's uh, it's a great way to start the year. The belts still fit perfect. That's what, you know, Regan, guys our age, we always worry about that. So uh, pumped to be back here with uh, with Call Racing starting our second full season together in the Xfinity Series. I'm glad those seat belts still fit, AJ. Good luck. Championship four last year, the, the five wins. He's found a good home across the board. How do you put into perspective what Colleg Racing has done the last four or five years? I just love to see the growth. And I talked to to the team and, and Chris Rice particularly, and I said, are there going to be growing pains with adding cup cars to your, your yeah. organization? Is, are you going to struggle in the Xfinity side? He said, absolutely not. He said, I don't know a, a ton about the cup series. I'm going to let the, those people take care of that. And I'm going to be at every Xfinity race making sure these cars are tuned up and ready to go win a championship. I anticipated Allgaier might be done, but he's not. Back out there in the seven. Well, maybe that qualifying runs what's going on right now, Adam. You can see he's running up top all by himself. So uh, just trying to get a, a feel for what his car might do qualifying. Hey, reminder tomorrow's schedule because qualifying is going to be huge in the morning at 11.30. 47 cars here for 38 spots. So you tune in to see who makes the field at 11.30. Then tomorrow afternoon, look at the lineup we have in the booth to start 2022. Denny Hamlin, three-time Daytona 500 champion, here with Chad Knauss, who's won a championship or two. And Coleman Presley, who's the spotter for Joey Logano, is going to be on the roof and giving us the sights and sounds from the spotter perspective because they make such a difference here. All the coverage begins with race day for Eastern on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. It appears to me that you're going to have your hands full in the booth. Yes. That, that'll be a fun show to watch. I just, I think it's great how Denny now that he's a driver and an owner, is he's become so analytical. I, mean, I noticed it the other day during media day. He answers questions different. I think that's going to translate really well to the booth. Yeah, he's certainly a student of the game. He studies all the data, watches all the film. He does everything you would want him to do as your driver and now he's going to be two guys owner <laughs> and he will certainly help them to understand exactly his process and want them to follow that you know to play to, to, to use the same information he uses you know chevrolet has been on an incredible run at daytona i think it's 15 of the last 16 races here in the xfinity series won by a chevrolet but but one of the reasons why is strength in numbers and you know, the, the Ford organization, and we just saw Ryan Sieg out there drafting with Riley Herbs. There, because of the alliance with SHR, and I know Team Penske has gone away, no 22 car this year, but I, I think we're going to see a more competitive race just because of the depth with the various manufacturers. And you, you, you will see that, Adam, and when the race starts, you're going to want to help your teammates. You're going to want to help. The, the manufacturers that you're aligned with and that's why you need more of those guys on the track so you, so you have more to choose from what do you have for us Regan well Adam a guy that would be interested to know your stat of 15 of the last 16 Chevy drivers have won down here or 15 of the last 16 races uh, Sheldon Creed driving for RCR this year a big difference for you coming from the truck series where you're a former champion how's this first practice session going and uh, with that stat that we just said how does that make you feel yeah no just uh, just trying to get comfy just Sit right into things, get the team going, just uh, yeah, just get things rolling for the year, get a good base, and uh, learn the new car a little bit. Obviously, I raced Phoenix last year and, and got a taste of it, but um, still a lot to learn for me. So I uh, just want to get through these first few weeks, learn as much as I can, build a good base for ourselves, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can get this wheel in Chevrolet and victory lane sooner than later.
Uh, good luck, Sheldon. Thanks. Hey, Regan, I, I don't want to crush confidence here, but but it's 14 of the last 15 on, on Super Speedway. So I, I got a little strong with my 15 of the last 16 at Daytona. <laughs> Sometimes it just comes out wrong, you know. Well, but, hey, but it speaks to how good they've been. Mike. But I, I just want to say this, Adam. There's so much in there. <laughs> I know. It, 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 whatever shoots out, you know, every now and then you might miss it by a race or two. Sometimes I need to stick one of those thumb drives in my ear and download <laughs> some of those unneeded files. Josh Balicki, noted road racer out of Wisconsin, driving the 36 for Mario Goslin. Now, you see, that's what I mean. Look at that car. You look at it go down the straightaway, the way it's set up, how 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 sleek it looks. You, you can make an argument that that car looks like the winning car. And when you walk through the garage area, that's what you get. And that's why tomorrow is going to be so entertaining. Wouldn't be surprised to see, me, see old Josh right up there in the top five digging. This is a car that's got a great history here. If you go back a couple of years ago, Alex LeBay driving for Mario Goslin. There was a, a cycle of green flag pit stops. They played the strategy game. Alex led a bunch of laps here and parlayed that into a, a solid finish. So this is an organization that understands how to come to a place like Daytona and get it done. Another strong run to pit road, making sure understands exactly what he needs to do to be as efficient as possible. Just want a tire sheet. Under seven minutes to go, practice for the Xfinity Series. Gibbs, Jones, Dollar, Truex, and Gregson, your top five. In NASCAR, the journey begins with one simple start. Turn, bump, win, and celebration. I am the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. I am NASCAR. Closing on the end of practice for the NASCAR Xfinity Series at Daytona. Sun is setting. Going to be a gorgeous night here in Central Florida with Michael Waltrip. I'm Adam Alexander. And with four minutes to go, the track is still active, and so is the garage, Regan. And we just talked to one uh, Grizzly veteran, as he said, A.J. Allmendinger, so I figured we would find the other one that's in the field, Justin Allgaier. Uh, good to be in your race car so far. A lot of experience coming to this place. How confident does that make you when you come down here? Well, I got a lot of experience, but no trophy from this place. So we'd like to uh, to fix that this weekend. But, you know, everybody at Universe Sports, it, it, you've been in these cars at this racetrack. It, it's really, uh, it's an honor to drive these cars. They build such fast Camaros. And our brand professional, I go to Camaros, are really good. Um, you know, we went out there and ran a group just kind of with our teammates. Had a few extras in there, but just make sure there's no rubs, drag scrapes. Uh, and then just followed it up with a single car run there just to see what it drove like. You know, qualifying, I think, is going to be important tomorrow um, to not slow yourself down. Sometimes attitude of these cars in the draft obviously doesn't help you when you're by yourself. So we try to make sure the attitude look good, and we'll go from there. Good luck, Justin. When you drive for Dale Jr., you've got a good attitude. When you come to Daytona, I drove for his dad, and, you know, Dale just knew how important the, the car was at Daytona and Talladega, and he insisted that everybody at the shop have that same attitude, and um, Dale Jr. took that family legacy and has done a great job of continuing it. We could do a little name game because there's some really good names. We had Jesse Awuji earlier. How about this? Caesar Baccarella. That's fun to say. Not Give as, me one, Michael. Uh, I just, I, when you talk names, what makes me happy is when you, when Ryan Reed won here, you <laughs> called him Ryan Reed. That was 2015. He won <laughs> twice. The first time, maybe a little more emotional than the second. Yeah, well, it was so cool seeing, uh, seeing that big move in that last turn to win the race, as we see a lot here at Daytona. And I'm also happy about this cat. He's got a quality ride, a veteran that's been around looking for this opportunity, Landon Castle. I think he'll win this year. I do, too. I do, too. I looked at the list of cars entered and tried to figure out how many of them were going to win, and it's really hard because there's 20, 22 guys that I felt like would, would win a race. We'll see if that happens. You mentioned Earnhardt at Daytona. Jeffrey Earnhardt driving a Toyota this weekend for Sam Hunt Racing, and he'll drive the 26 some as well this year. That's a good-looking car as well, and Sam Hunt's done just such a great job of getting these cars up to speed. We talked to Ryan Truex, and he, he's up in the top five in the speed charts, so this team came to Daytona ready to roll. Speaking of great names, you remember who drove for them some last year, might some later this year, Santino Ferrucci. Ferrucci. Another great name. Yeah, Clint Boyer loves that name. I know he does. He, I think he turned me on to it. Minutes are winding down here in this practice session. There's a couple of different agendas as Matt Mills rose down the back straight at him. You wanted to, you want to 
you want to find out if how your car is going to draft but some guys just want to be in the race and so they're out there making single runs checking their qualifying speed seeing if there's anything they can do to make the cars faster when we go qualifying tomorrow because we mentioned 47 cars here some guys won't even get to race tomorrow and i think a lot of times at daytona you think as a driver if i'm in it i can win it and getting in it is going to be difficult because of the competition we've seen that a lot over the years RSS Racing bringing three cars this weekend. Among them, Kyle Sieg, younger brother of Ryan Sieg, who we've had so much fun with. 20 years old. Get to race the high banks of Daytona. That's probably a dream come true for that young man. I know it was for me when I was a kid. Some ARCA experience here. And now we introduce you to Michael's favorite driver. One of them in the field, Josh yeah. Williams. Yeah, I saw a sign yesterday on... A1A, Josh Williams, 530. You can come meet him. Certainly love Josh Williams. He not only drives that race car, he can he can build the engine, set up the chassis, he can do it all. BJ McLeod Racing for the first time, three full-time crew chiefs working in the shop and at the track. And then you factor in a guy like this who can not only get it done behind the wheel, but as you said, help out in the garage area. That's a big deal. There'll be a Josh Williams on track tomorrow. Josh Williams on the spotter stand Sunday. Two different people. The spotter stand, Josh, will be leading the way for Ryan Blaine. <laughs> Here's Regan. Well, Adam, the fastest man in Daytona right now. Ty Gibbs, a great practice session for you. Heard you say earlier there was a little miss in the engine, and then you went top of the board. Yeah, I just had a little issue shifting. It was nothing. It was just rookie mistakes, I guess. Even though I don't have rookie stripes anymore. So, <laughs> you know, our Monster Energy Toyota GR Super is super fast. You know, I couldn't thank all the guys on my team and uh, my teammates. I got great teammates this weekend, Drew Dollar and Brand Jones. So they got some good speedway experience, and, you know, hopefully we can make a good run out of it. Good luck tomorrow. You saw it. The red and black flags have been displayed. Regan talked to the fastest man in Daytona when it comes to the Xfinity Series. Your observations with the on-track activity in the last 50 minutes. His smile just made me happy because that, that's what it feels like to be the fastest in Daytona. You can't wait to line up and go racing. This place means so much to a NASCAR driver to go to Victory Lane and to know you've got the fastest car in town. You're going to sleep well tonight in anticipation of what tomorrow could bring. For the Xfinity Series, qualifying here on FS1 tomorrow morning at 1130. Then tomorrow afternoon, it's race day at 4, racing at 5. Denny Hamlin, Chad Canals in the booth. Coleman Presley on the spotter stand. Next on FS1, it's the third practice of the week for the Cup Series. Mike Joy, Clint Boyer standing by. All those drivers chasing the Harley J. Earl Trophy on Sunday afternoon. Tonight, 630, race day for the Camping World Truck Series. And they open up 2022 later on on FS1. It's a great evening in Daytona. Keep it right here for all the NASCAR excitement with Regan Smith and Michael Waltrip. I'm Adam Alexander. It's so good to have you with us from the World Center of Racing.